Good morning. This is Wednesday, April the 29th. And uh, today as we gather uh, together with this technology, I want to encourage you with the word. But before I do that, I want to remind you that tonight uh, we have some special things. Uh, Pastor Joel's going to have stuff for the youth. Uh, Miss Dawn's going to have stuff for the uh, our children. And then we'll have uh, some testimonies and uh, different ones in the congregation that are going to share with you uh, what God is doing in their heart and life during this time of COVID crisis 19. And so uh, be tuned in to that on Facebook and YouTube and those uh, kinds of things as those posts are put up. This morning I want to uh, read to you from uh, Matthew chapter 10 and kind of a follow-up of Yesterday, as we talked about those things that are bound in heaven, bound on earth, or bound in heaven, those things are loosed on earth, or loosed in heaven, and and I talked to you about that having to do with uh, when we stay quiet, uh, we we bind the the gospel, we bind the word that's in heaven, but whenever we freely uh, confess the art to Christ, the Son of the Living God then we lose the gospel in this world. This verse comes from Matthew 10, verse 32. It says, Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. And uh, that comes as an early admonition that I think was a part of that growing and building faith in Simon Peter, which six chapters later, he confesses that uh, confession of faith, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he did so freely. And already these disciples had shown that they were willing to confess Jesus openly because they were following him. Everywhere Jesus went, everywhere that Jesus taught, uh, they were following him. And so they had that part of their faith as they were uh, confessing Christ as as uh, as a special rabbi, as a special teacher, and then come to find out that he was the Savior, uh, the Savior of the world. Uh, the thing about Simon Peter and about all of our life is there seems to be a growing element in our faith where that confession gets stronger and stronger and stronger. When we have those moments like Peter did, at the trial of Jesus, where he denied Christ. And what is that all about? Well, we have those moments whenever uh, we kind of step back. And my encouragement is, be careful about that. Uh, one would never want to develop that as a habit of their life. But after Peter realized the resurrected Christ, and after he was filled with Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, uh, he had no problem in any setting confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I remember in Acts chapter 3, he and John had gone to the temple to pray on the third hour, and they had healed the lame man, if you recall the scripture. And then they were called on the carpet. The Pharisees brought him in. And then as they were tried before uh, the Sanhedrin council, they asked uh, by what authority did you uh, heal this man? And they said it was in the name of Jesus Christ. And then we have that famous verse in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 that says, There is no other name under heaven and earth whereby men must be saved. It is critical, it is critical that we step out and we freely confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That has everything in the world to do with that loosening aspect. And again, as I encouraged you yesterday, if we want to see the spiritual awakening in our country, that means many people coming to Christ, then we're going to have to have a revival in our churches to pray for the lost. And then get out there amongst the lost and freely confess that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus said, if you confess me before, the, uh, before men, 
I will confess you before the Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father in heaven. Let this word encourage you as uh, you become a witness. It's interesting to me that during this COVID crisis, we've been driven outside the walls of the church. Literally, we've been driven outside the walls of the church. And we're in our neighborhoods. And we're in our community. Many of us having to stay in our homes and not being able to get out of at all right now. But many see their neighbors. Every time I stop and visit with someone on their front porch, they talk about the neighbors that are walking up and down the sidewalk. And some of those are talking about how they are trying to establish relationships with their neighbors so that they can share their faith in Christ. I want to encourage you to do that. And then as things begin to open up, don't take the step back. Don't take a step backwards. Continue to grow in that boldness to confess Christ. That's what the world needs today. Let's pray. Lord, we, as we're looking at these lessons of the importance of our turning loose the gospel in a very dark world, that, uh, that Lord, we, we would freely confess that you are our Lord and you're our Savior. And that many people, because of our confession and testimony, would hear and see that, and they would come to faith in Christ as their Savior. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.